All right, kiddos. Today we're going to talk about buffer solutions. You may have heard of buffer solutions before. Let me define a buffer for you. Uh, a buffer solution is a solution that maintains fairly constant pH when moderate amounts of acid or base are added to it. It's made by mixing a weak acid or a weak base and a salt of that acid or base. Let me give you a couple of examples. Acetic acid is a weak acid. A salt of that weak acid would be sodium acetate. If I mixed this acid with the salt of that acid, I would have what's called a buffer. Similarly, if I had, had ammonium hydroxide, a weak base, and ammonium chloride, a salt of that weak base, I would have a buffer. Let me just show you quickly how they work. Let's use the first example here. Let's say that I added OH minuses. I added a base to this buffer mixture. The OH minuses would react with the acetic acid to neutralize it. You'd form H2O and you'd have these acetate ions. So the OH minuses would be gobbled up, so to speak, by the weak acid. So the pH would not be affected too dramatically by the addition of a base to that buffer. Now, what if I added hydrogen ions or an acid to that buffer? Well, remember, the buffer is a mixture of not only this weak acid, but the salt of the weak acid. I have sodium acetate. Now, I don't care about the uh, sodiums, but I do care about the acetates. You know from our previous discussion on hydrolysis that acetate ions love to be with hydrogen ions. They love to stick together. So when I add hydrogen ions or an acid to this buffer, the acetate ions will, in a sense, gobble them up to form H2H3O2. So, in effect, neutralizing the addition of that acid. You see how they sort of work? Here, let's do another example here on the top of the next page. Let's take a buffer um, by mixing 0.1 molar hydrofluoric acid with 0.2 molar sodium fluoride. So, I have a weak acid, hydrofluoric acid, and a salt of that weak acid, sodium fluoride. Now remember, I really don't care too much about the sodiums. What I'm really after are these fluoride ions that I'm adding to make my buffer. Now, the Ka of hydrofluoric acid is 6.61 times 10 to the negative fourth. So let's create an icebox diagram, okay? Initially, I have 0.1 molar hydrofluoric acid, and I have 0.2 molar fluoride ions and I don't have any hydrogen ions to begin with. Now I do know that as this um, acid dissociates in water, it will go down by a certain amount. We'll call that X. Now it's a one-to-one -one mol mole ratio, so for every one of these I lose, I will gain a hydrogen ion, and I will gain an F negative. So at equilibrium, I will have uh, 0.10 molar minus x of my HF remaining, x of my H plus, and 0 0.20 plus x of my F negative. Now, if I write the equilibrium expression for this acid, I get the Ka equals the H plus times the F negative all over HF. So, I can now plug in my equilibrium concentrations, where the H plus is x, my F negative is 0 0.20 plus x, and my HF is 0 0.10 minus X, and that all equals my Ka, which is 6.61 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now remember, I want to solve for the H plus concentration here because um, that will allow me to figure out the pH. Now, my Ka is 10 to the negative fourth or smaller. So remember what I can do. Uh, when, when that happens, when my Ka is 10 to the negative fourth or smaller, I can neglect adding or subtracting these x's. So what I really end up with is that my H plus, 
which is right here, is my x will equal the Ka times the HF concentration all over the F negative concentration. Let's make sure you see where I got that from. Okay, if I want to solve for my H plus, which is my X, uh, in fact, let's just call that H plus, okay, kiddos? My H plus, right there, that will be equal to 6.61 times 10 to the negative fourth times 0 0.10, and we no longer need to subtract out that x because it's such a small number compared to 0 0.10, all over 0 0.20, and remember we don't have to add the x to it. And so let's see what that turns out to be. So we'll get our calculators out, and let's see, we'll take 6.61 second ee to the negative fourth times 0.1 divided by 0.2, we end up with 3.31 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now that would be my hydrogen ion concentration. That would be the molarity of my hydrogen ions. So the pH would be the negative log of that number. So let's see what that turns out to be. The negative log of that number turns out to be 3.5. So my buffer's pH would be 3.5. Now, what if I added an acid to this buffer? How would that affect the pH? Well, let's see. If I add an acid to this buffer, I'm adding H pluses. Remember, I have F negatives present. It was 0 0.20 molar, if you remember. And so when I add H pluses to F negatives, F negatives love to gobble up H pluses. They form the weak acid, HF, that molecule. So they will, in effect, reduce the hydrogen ion concentration, thus buffering the effect of adding the acid. So the F negative concentration goes down, the HF will go up. This ratio here, this HF to F negative ratio that we saw just a minute ago, changes very little. Therefore, the H plus changes very little and the pH of the solution will change very little. It might go down just a little bit, but not much. Now, what if I added hydroxides to this buffer? Well, if I add hydroxides, remember, my buffer has a weak acid in it as well. In fact, it had 0.10 molar hydrofluoric acid in it. So the hydroxides will react with those HFs to form water and F negatives. In effect, this HF will gobble up those hydroxides and buffer the effect. So the HF concentration will go down. The F negative will go up a little bit because we do make some F negatives. But this ratio here that we saw earlier, once again, will change very little. So the H plus will change very little, so the pH will not change very much. When I add a strong base, it might go up just a little bit, but very, very little. Now, it's important to remember that buffers play a very important role in living systems. For example, the pH of your blood is about 7.2. It turns out if your blood pH changes by a half of a pH unit, either up or down, you die. You learn in your biology classes that um, enzymes are made out of proteins, and enzymes catalyze many reactions in your body, and the shape of those enzymes are changed dramatically by changes in pH. So, when the pH changes just a little bit in your blood, those enzymes become deactivated or useless, and many chemical reactions can't occur in your body, and as a result, well, you die. Now, next year in AP, we talk a lot more about buffers much more extensively. This year, I just wanted to introduce to you the concept of a buffer. Remember, a buffer is made up of a weak acid and the salt of that weak acid mixed together, or a weak base and the salt of that weak base mixed together. When mixed together, they can buffer the effect of adding an acid or a base to your solution. Okay? That's it for today. Just a short video. See you soon. Bye-bye.